And I thought, well, I'll just come in and give my talk and leave. And uh, But then when I got to thinking, I thought, well, maybe I should uh, come and, and listen. And I am really delighted because this has been an excellent program. I wish every extension director in the West or the country could have heard all of the discussions that we've had in the last two days because this has been a tremendous program. So that's the first reason, but uh, it's always good to be extension uh, colleagues. In fact, uh, if I had time, I'd tell you about my uh, jobs. I didn't get an extension, but I finally did land a job in extension, but I don't have time to go into that today. <laughs> but another reason I want to uh, tell you is uh, hearing the presentations, I can't imagine any group that is more appropriate to for the message that I'm trying to deliver. <laughs> because solutions from the land is really what we've been talking about in so many different ways and so many uh, different nuances. Well, anyway, solutions from the land really got started uh, with in 2009 with a group of people starting a dialogue to talk about solutions of the land. And then included people from uh, the forestry community, from the farming community, from conservation, from environmentalists, <laughs> and others. And participants came from all different walks of life. We had uh, farmers, we had foresters, we had uh, people from uh, different uh, uh, environmental organizations, we had a few academics. It was just a cross-section of people to talk about these things. But Solution of the Land really, after that first few meetings got started, we established a vision of Solution of the Land, and I'm going to give that in just a few minutes. But I want to share a few of the things that we talked about, the challenges, a proposed vision, and a mission for what we're doing, and then some ways of achieving that vision. And we've been talking about some of those ways today and yesterday. I would mention the sponsors of this effort was the United Nations Foundation, the Farm Foundation, the Nature Conservancy, and Conservation International. So you can see it was a nice blend of both uh, uh, practical agriculture, forestry, as well as conservation issues. It's important to recognize a little bit about uh, uh, population issues. If we go back before agriculture, some 10, 12,000 years ago, when man was truly a hunter, a gatherer, uh, the population of the planet, we didn't have any census uh, takers then, but it's estimated the population of the planet was one to five million. That's million with an M. That's not many people for this old planet. Well, then all during the period over the 10, 12,000 years that agriculture was evolving, and as we got more productivity from agriculture, the population of the planet grew so that by 1 AD, we had a population of about 200 million. Then it only took 1,800 years to reach a billion in 1804. Only 123 years later, we had 2 billion, and of course, the pace is picking up. This past October, the population of the planet past the seven billion mark. And most people place the uh, population of the planet by 2050 at over nine billion. That means in only 40 years or less than 40 years from now, we're going to have two billion more miles to feed. But that's only a part of the challenge because almost all of the people of the world, including us, want more. We want not only more food, uh, we want a greater diversity of food. We want all sorts of other things as well. So the challenge we have facing us and the pressure on the land resource of this planet is enormous. So anyway, that brings us up to the uh, vision of solutions for the land effort. Let me read this very carefully, or you can read it too. In 2050, U.S. farmers, ranchers, and foresters manage land to produce food, fiber, energy needed to support a growing population and economy while simultaneously improving biodiversity and health of the environment. Now that means that we not only have to provide what's needed, but we also have to be concerned about the old planet and being able to survive. Well, anyway, that calls for a mission which includes to bring together a broad range of stakeholders to identify and implement policies and practices to enable land to be sustainably managed to produce the food, feed, fiber, and energy while protecting and improving critical environmental resources. Well, if we're going to be successful, there's got to be many, many outcomes from solution of the land effort. The first one is we've got to 
increase productivity because we've got to meet all of these needs if we're going to be successful. And finally, we've got to make more efficient use of the resources that we have. We've got to reduce waste. We've got to find ways to conserve natural resources. We've got a lot of other outcomes that's got to happen. At the same time, we're meeting those needs and expectations of this nine plus billion people that's on the planet. Another thing, we've got to ensure adequate compensation for ecosystem services. Now, I'm looking forward to somebody's presentation this afternoon on that, providing some type of means of compensating for ecosystem services. We have a nice way for compensating for food. We pay for it. But the ecosystem services is a bit more challenging. But yet, if we all agree that's important, and if people do it, we've got to find some way to compensate them. So that's a real challenge. Also, communities have got to work together because it's no question that so many of the things in dealing with the land requires a broad base of support from the total community. And finally, another is the policy decisions about the land will reflect the results of multi-stakeholder assessment and ensure the regulatory framework that supports su suitable land management. That's another very important one. Well, managing a land resources is both a desirable and sustainable matter has a lot of challenges. It requires consideration for such things as biodiversity, clean air, clean water, carbon sequestration, and a lot of things we don't normally think of. Certainly the population at large of the country doesn't think of these sorts of things. Here's just a few of the challenges that need to be met. But let's not forget, in addition to meeting those needs and expectations, you gotta have some land for cities. You gotta have some land for railroads, highways, ballparks, uh, parks, military reservations, highway rights of way, and, and all sorts of other needs for the land in addition to meeting the needs and expectations of our survival. So this is a real challenge. But the first challenge is loss of land. And I know that I've heard so many talks about how we're using our land. And, and of course, uh, just in the last 25 years, we've lost some 11 million acres of cropland, some 12 million acres of pasture and rangeland, and 16 million acres of forest land to development. And for all practical purposes, most of that land that's gone into development will not be coming out of development. When they build a hotel like this, you don't normally see this torn down and replanted to wheat, at least not normally. Another is land managers must contend with a multitude of uncoordinated regulations and policies for all land use activities. Regulations and policies are often conflicting, redundant, and of course that always adds to the cost of managing the land. So that's something that's got to be a concern. One of my greatest concerns and one of the greatest challenges is the declining investment in research. And that is something that deeply concerns me. And when I say research, I'm including extension and education as well because those all go together. But that is a deep, deep concern about if we're going to meet the expectations of managing and finding solutions to the land. Another challenge that has many far-reaching implications is climate change. We just got through hearing a great discussion on climate change at our table in the presentation preceding that. Folks, this is real. And, and uh, we got some naysayers around the country, and I realized, in fact, the Wall Street Journal had a big article I read coming out on the plane that uh, it wasn't naysaying climate change, but it certainly was not putting it in a very good light. The presentation we heard just before the discussion is you can't argue with that. And that's going to have a way we deal with the land issues. And finally, dealing with risk, market volatility, and the multiple de demands that we have on the land. And of course, different expectations. Uh, and things like uh, trends we see, uh, for example, uh, more organically grown food, that's going to have an impact. Uh, more locally grown food, that's going to have an impact. All of these things are differing and they will have an impact on how we use our land. But the important issue for us today is, how do we achieve the solution of the land vision? There's one thing for certain, the policies and procedures and the way we've approached in the past will not be successful in the future. And you can write that down and take it to the bank because that's real. 
Solution from the Land hopes to shift our vision towards a future in which American agriculture, forestry, and conservation take effective, collaborative steps towards facing 21st century challenges. And we just had a great discussion at my table about uh, we can't keep doing the same things we've been doing in the past and expect to solve new problems in the future. Sounds simple, but folks, that's tough for folks that have responsibility for these programs. There's both short-term and long-term issues we have to deal with. And in the short term, we need to use all the tools we have at hand to solve the problem. But at the same time, we need to be finding new ways of dealing with problems. And that's where research comes in. And that's why the loss and declining support for research and extension education concerns me. Because that's where you find the new ways to deal with problems is through research and extension programs. And this is something that we're not doing as we've done in the past. And you can mark my word on that. That's something that's got to be changed. Well, anyway, the final analysis is we've got to produce more with less. We've got to maintain adequate levels of productivity with diminishing resources. And that's a challenge. But I'm going to talk more about that in a few minutes. The policies and practices of the past will not be sufficient to beat the needs of tomorrow. The world cannot afford some of the catastrophic issues that have happened in the past on this old planet. And let me just give you just a couple of three examples. Number one, the Dust Bowl of the Great Plains in the 30s. Uh, that's a sad day for our country because we all have read what happened in half of Oklahoma and some of the other states in the Great Plains blew away. Most of the population out migrated. Of course, that's what Pal California is populated with today for the most part. So it was a great, great disaster for our country. But we finally got Oklahoma about tied back down, so that's in good shape now. But even during the time of the Romans, uh, it was thought of that uh, most of North Africa, Tunisia and uh, Algeria and some of those countries in that part of Africa were considered the granary of Rome. That's where they got most of their grain from. Hardly that's the case today. And at one time, over 2,000 square miles of Lebanon was covered in magnificent cedar forest. Today, they say there's only four little groves of uh, cedars left in Lebanon. I have never been to Lebanon, but, and supposedly of those four little groves, there's only 43 trees of the original virgin stand remaining of a great, magnificent forest at one time. And in China, the Huangho River uh, was a uh, slow-moving river that deposited a lot of silt, so the the local people kept building levees to keep the river in its banks, and uh, they did that for many, 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 many years. But finally, they couldn't build the levees any higher, so the river just finally found another path to the sea. So these are the kind of things, the examples that illustrate some of the things that we have not done, that we've got to do a better job in the future. I'm sure you recognize from these topics a great opportunity in discussions that a cross-section of people had in talking about the land, especially when you bring together farmers, uh, foresters, uh, and other types of land managers, as well as the environmental community and uh, the United Nations group and all of that group, we had a lot of good discussions, as you can well imagine. But anyway, we uh, established some pathways, some of the ways that we ought to approach this issue of solutions from the land. And I want to just run through some of these very quickly. The first is that if we're going to deal with the solution of the land issue, we have to approach it from a land scale, a landscape scale type issue. We can't look at it on just one small track of land or just one small issue or just one uh, uh, component. We've got to look at it from a broad perspective, from a total landscape scale issue. That's the first thing we've got to do. Another one is we've got to harmonize all of the policy frameworks. There's so many different uh, regulations and policies that are overlapping. Uh, sometimes they're contradictory. Sometimes they're redundant. And of course, we all know about those sorts of things. You and Extension have to deal with that side of the issue all the time. But we've got to harmonize these things so we don't spin our wheels and waste time trying to bring together things that don't want to be brought together. Finally, we've got to develop risk mitigation tools that support or create market drivers for public goods. A third pathway is reward stewardship for ecosystem services. We've already talked about that earlier, and that's a real challenge because if we're going to expect anyone to invest and do things that uh, provide ecosystem services, and that is environmental issues or conservation issues, we've got to find a way of compensating those people because if we don't, we won't get them done. And a fourth pathway 
This is to energize and coordinate research. As I pointed out, this is probably the one that I focus on the most because I was co-chair of the energy, I'm sorry, of the research section of this effort. Uh, Cornelia Flora, a, and a sociologist from Iowa State, and I were co-chairs of this section. Plus, I'm writing a book on, on, on research right now, so this was really uh, the area that I specialize in the most. We all know that agriculture is dependent upon a constant infusion of information, knowledge, and technology, and that's only can be gained through a research effort. So research is important. All aspects of agriculture, including ecosystem services, have benefited from research in the past. And the challenges that we face today and tomorrow will require new and ongoing research. As pointed out, solutions from the land requires a broad multi-stakeholder approach. So consequently, there must be a mechanism to set research agendas and integrate agriculture, forest, and conservation goals into a unified effort. So that means all components has to be a part of the plan. Unfortunately, support for agriculture research is declining, not only in this country, but in many countries around the world. In fact, some of the parts of the world where, where agricultural productivity has diminished so much is some of those countries that have declined in support of agriculture research the most. But I'm really concerned about what's going on in this country. But in recent years, uh, this has seemed like the pace has accelerated. I don't think I have to tell you that. Well, one thing on talking about research, you know, they say a picture is worth a, a, a hundred words or a thousand words. Forget the quote. But anyway, I want to show you a picture that's worth 10,000 words. And this is the chart. There's three lines up there. Now, that seemed like a simple little chart, isn't it? And it goes over about the last half a century. If you'll notice the red line, the bottom line is almost flat. That is inputs for production. Pretty good, isn't it? Inputs are flat. That's what we said just a while ago. The other two lines are almost identical in parallel. The top line is output, and the uh, blue line is productivity. This curve, or these, this graph, was prepared by three economists in the Economic Research Service. Now, what it really means and why I say this is worth 10,000 words is the simple fact that if you look over this period, uh, output has increased 1.58% over that period. Productivity has increased 1.52%. Over this period, inputs increased six hundredths of 1%, essentially nothing. What that really means is we've increased output dramatically by only increasing efficiency of production. And that has been brought about almost exclusively by research. So if there's any little chart that makes the case for the importance of research, this chart makes that case, in my opinion, so completely. Finally, the fifth pathway to achieving the solution of the land vision is transform and modernize information networks. We've got to do a better job of communicating. And Lord knows if, if anybody anywhere has any assignment in that area, it's extension. So we've got to do a better job in how we communicate and how we provide information about all of these topics we've been talking about for the past two days. Throughout the many deliberations of solutions from the land, the task force was the single, single thought this should not, cannot, must not be just another study that we write a nice publication, pat ourselves on the back, and go home. And by the way, if you want a copy of it, could you get it a while ago? Uh, I left a, a, a display copy at the back, if y'all would take a look at that, and left some business cards with the uh, website on it so you don't have to look a copy home, just take a business card, and when you get home, you can print your copy out. But the whole task force was convinced we've got to make this the beginning, not the end. And uh, I think that's the, the, uh, really the important point I want to make about that. Some of the things we envision are recruiting others to uh, be engaged and support this. And I know already that I have everybody in this room is a supporter because from the comments you've made and the work you're doing, this is what you're doing already. Uh, this is part of your effort. 
in so many different ways and so many different approaches. Uh, we also are looking at uh, building multi-stakeholder leadership workshops. How can we go back home and include solution of the land and some of the efforts that you're making? And I'm hoping I'm going to have some converts after this meeting that will take solution of the land to heart and, and get a copy of the publication and incorporate that any way that you can in the folks that you interface with. We want to complete and inventory all U.S. integrated land management projects. And we pointed out the need for land, water, and other natural resources to be managed in an integrated manner and at the scale necessary for this vision to be realized. Finally, we wish to create a national awareness of solutions from the land and identify policies and regulations that work at cross purposes so we can fix them. We've got to find ways to facilitate everybody to be a part of the solution from the land goals and achieve the vision. Here are a few of the ideas for collaborative projects. Create a nationwide inventory of integrated land management projects. I just mentioned that. Identify policies that don't work so we can fix them. The whole regional and dialogues on ecosystem markets and sustainable si supply chains. And I'm really looking forward to the presentation after lunch on ecosystem markets. Develop a way to prioritize research. We can't do everything, and especially with declining budgets, we've got to pick and choose wisely and use our resources in research in the most effective way possible. We've got to identify all the metrics that we can find that serve as broad indicators of sustainability, and that's another common theme at this meeting. Here's where you come in. As pointed out in my opening remarks, I said that you represent among the most important groups in helping achieve the vision of solutions of the land. And why is that? Well, it's pretty obvious. The first is you already know how land is to our well-being on this planet. I don't have to tell a single person here how important the land is, but I'm going to tell you, you would be shocked at the part of our population that does not really genuinely understand and appreciate why land is so important. And not only the land, but that top little layer of soil. Our existence on this planet is dependent upon the top six inches or a foot, in some cases a little bit deeper, level of topsoil on the planet. And we get a few other things from the ocean like fish and mussels and snails and things, and that's great. But essentially we live and depend upon the land. But also, number two, you know, the people that can make a difference. We have county agents in almost every county in this country. We have a few counties that don't have county agents, but almost every county in this country has a county agent. And you have contact in your role with many of those people, or most of those people. Those county agents know people that can get things done, and you know how to get to those people. So we know how to get things done. Also, with when you un understand and appreciate the land, when you appreciate the uh, uh, people that can make a difference, and then you understand clearly how to get things done, then that means that we have a good way of achieving our vision. Then the question is, specifically, what could you do? And I'm going to give you a few things. Publicly endorse solution of the land. Make that a part of your mantra, a part of what you think is important. And I think that you will. Identify multi-stakeholder-led integrated landscape initiatives achieving solution of the land objectives. Host a solution for the land discussion forum for ag conservation and forestry stakeholders. How do we bring together these groups? How do we work them into your ongoing programs? Sponsor a field tour to spotlight solution of the land efforts. <coughs> and identify policies and programs that work at cross purposes so we can fix glitches and fix make things that don't work well. I'd like to close my presentation with a couple of statements. The first is by W.C. Loudermilk. Does anybody know who W.C. Loudermilk is? Yeah, I see one hand going up. Well, he was the uh, former assistant chief of the Soil Conservation Service. A great conservation if there ever was one. But he, he wrote something that I thought caught my eye. In a very real sense, land does not lie. It bears a record of what men write on it. 
In a larger sense, a nation writes its record on the land, and a civilization writes its record on the land as well. It's a record that is easy to read by those who understand the simple language of the land. I submit to you, what will we write? What will be our message? What will we write on the land? As we use the land to meet our everyday needs immediately, will we ensure the land is there for all future generations? Or will we leave it up to Congress to ensure that? I appreciate your chuckle. <laughs> we have a responsibility. And, and I'm going to, to leave the, uh, my final, final comment is the word spoken by Gerald O'Hara. Anybody know who Gerald O'Hara is? You do? Of course. All right, all right. Well, anyway, for those of you that don't, Gerald O'Hara uh, is uh, noted, uh, quoted in Margaret Mitchell's great book, Gone with the Wind. And he says, uh, looking out over Tara, his plantation. The land is the only thing in the world worth working for, worth fighting for, worth dying for, because it's the only thing that lasts. And I think that says it all. The land is important. It's important for our survival today, and it's critically important for the survival of all future generations in the future. I ask you to join me and many others, not just in talking about it, but in really supporting the solution from the land vision. Thank you very much. Thank you.